there definitely is something unique about Freelander. It's not just another motor car. There seems to be a significant amount of passion is raised by people wanting to come and have a look at the vehicle. People really want to own something quite special. This vehicle, I do believe, is going to become something of a cult vehicle. And I would even suggest it might ultimately become an icon. On Freelander, we put an enormous amount of effort, an unprecedented amount of effort, up front in the engineering quality, so that we got the design to a higher level of right first time than we've ever had before on any program. What we really did differently on Freelander was to, for myself and Jerry McGovern to join forces as chief engineer and chief designer to uh, mutually understand what our requirements were with regard to progressing the design of the vehicle and progressing the engineering of the vehicle. We have, for example, built the whole vehicle in a virtual reality environment, assembling all the components together before we physically built a real prototype. You can then concentrate on the real fine detail about making it excellent from a, an execution point of view, the real, the real detailed stuff that makes it a great car as opposed to just an ordinary car. Working to process has become a project obsession in everything that we've done, right from the early development phases, the engineering phases, through into manufacturing, where in build, there is only one way to build a Freelander, and that is to the prescribed process. The recognition of the heritage comes through by virtue of things like the castellation in the bonnet, the clamshell shut line, the very upright nature of the front end. If you were to compare it with a Range Rover, you could see those similarities, but this is a modern evolution of those design cues, which is pushing the boundaries for Land Rover. Some of the things you wouldn't normally see on, a, on, a, on traditional Land Rover architecture are things like the very fast screen angle, much faster than you'd see on the original Range Rover or on Defender. This is the first Land Rover that doesn't make extensive use of aluminium in its skin panels. However, it doesn't mean to say that we've cut corners. All of the steel panels are what's called double-coated zinc. It has an inherently high level of corrosion resistance. Also, the side glasses, again, we have what's called tumble home, which falls into the roof. Traditionally, on Land Rovers, they're much more upright. The Freelander body structure is quite different uh, to previous bodies that we've developed at Land Rover vehicles. It's what we call a monocoque construction, i.e. the body is all one piece, unlike a separate body and chassis. We went for an independent suspension system that in itself is very lightweight and tremendously good in off-road and graded road circumstances. The body side section, it's, it's much more rounded, it's fuller instead of being flat. Those are the elements, if you like, that give it this contemporaneous. It has an overall solidity and toughness that gives it an incredibly good stance. Of course, unmistakably, it is a Land Rover. It's got features built into the vehicle to um, assist the uh, customer off-road got permanent four-wheel drive with this, but for any given situation, it will transfer the amount of power that goes to any wheel at any given time to give maximum traction. And we've got a little button on the, the gear lever, and when you engage that, it will limit the speed at which you descend any hill. With the viscous coupling and the electronic traction control doing their jobs in an invisible manner, and the easy nature of the engagement of the hill descent control means that effectively driving this vehicle is a piece of cake. The development work and early prototype work we carry out to rover engineering standards so they're repeatable in a very clinical test environment. We will put a large number of miles on the vehicle in a very short space of time so that we can prove that when the customer gets the vehicle, it's going to do what he wants it to do. It's not going to let him down. 
Our job is to test everything to do with the car. And this vehicle, and each part in this vehicle, has to pass that test. Now that involves some fairly horrendous sort of testing. The more extreme we do it, the more confident we've got that the public will enjoy the car. Freelander is being sold virtually on a worldwide basis. And something that we learned from BMW is in-market testing. If actually physically testing the vehicle for a length of time in the market you intend to sell the car. We come to Arizona in the USA because we can get like three months of ambient temperatures above 40 degrees C. So this is as hot as the engine's going to get because it's working its hardest. Even though most customers will never experience conditions as extreme as this, it gives them a, a sense of security to know that the vehicles are capable of so much more than they will ever subject them to. We wanted this vehicle to be very contemporary, to be very modern, but at the same time to recognise its heritage. It is designed to be appropriate for its market sector, but it is offering much more than the norm in that sector of the market. It's not just about style, it's about design and engineering being inextricably linked to create a product that has true integrity. It's this unique combination that pushes it above the competition. Is a real sort of jaw dropper with regard to its presence, but really does deliver uh, off road capability and all the hallmarks really of what Land Rover is all about and the marked credentials of a Land Rover product. The ultimate test of Freelander, though, will be what the customers think. It's all very well to build a tough vehicle, but unless you're careful doing it, you can finish up with something that looks like a chicken shed. Now, of course. That isn't what we've got here at the moment. Look at these nice fine sections here. Look at this raked windscreen. I mean, the whole thing is a very stylish machine, which I think people who put a high value on car styling are going to appreciate. In fact, we appreciate it at my magazine Autocar so much that we are giving it a design award, and I think it richly deserves it. It's a very easy car to drive. Lovely ride, I think. The thing I like most, though, is this command driving position, reminiscent of the Range Rover. The whole car to me is reminiscent of the early Range Rover and I must say I like it the more for that. Freelander's market is obviously going to have a good fashion component. People are going to want these because they look desirable and all the rest and I think there's quite enough style about Freelander for it to be a leader in that area. But what's going to divide it from the rest of the cars is that when the moment comes for it to demonstrate its credentials in rather tougher going like this, it's going to be good enough to do it. So my verdict of the Land Rover Freelander is very bullish, I think. I think it's extremely stylish and well packaged. I think it's been very well developed, the best developed Land Rover I can remember. I think it's really going to occupy the territory and give the other class contenders quite a hard time. You might be interested to know that I was talking to one of your rivals recently and he said that this, the Land Rover Freelander, was his idea of a no-risk vehicle. It would just sell itself. Traditional Land Rover products have had a separate chassis, but what we've done with this structure is actually weld the chassis onto the body, which gives it incredible structural stiffness and a great backbone for the vehicle. Another important element underneath the body is the two subframes, both made of very high gauge steel, capable of taking some very severe knocks and bangs and the sort of ruggedness that you'd expect from a Land Rover product. Any adverse conditions on roads, such as ice and snow, uh, where the, the terrain really is, is, is steep or it's very slippy, then 
uh, hill descent control will manage the car down that descent without the driver having to take any additional action. The design of the body shell has taken crash performance very seriously into consideration. Of course, we've looked at the full frontal impact and all these offset tests that we have to do now. In respect of side impacts, we've put very, very large side intrusion beams which protect in respect of side impact. We've also moved the seats inboard, thus giving a, a big space between the, the passenger or the driver and, and the door itself. So in the event of a severe side impact, you've got extra crush space that's creating a big safety cage around the occupants. The seatbelt systems on Freelander feature on the front uh, pyrotechnic pretensioners, which are uh, devices which pull the seatbelt tight under crash conditions. They'll go off at the same time as the airbags, pulling you back into the seat and deploying the airbag at the same time. Somebody comes up and parks very close behind you and it's difficult to be able to open the, the tail door system itself because it's side hinged to be able to access the load space area. Um, we've designed in the rear glass such that it can be operated from the remote control. We then are able to offer a, a solid rear glass for the soft back. It's got a rear heated screen element in it and a wash wipe system which is absolutely unique for this type of vehicle for the marketplace. Something that we're particularly proud of is the reconfigurability of the, of the rear end. A customer buying the XC derivative of the softback, drop the glass down, take the entire softback off the vehicle and immediately fit a hardback in a matter of minutes. With Freelander, we've specifically engineered the car to be as low as possible from a cost of ownership point of view. Behind the, the, the front face of the bumper is what we call an aluminium crush can. on a low speed impact designed to absorb those sort of impacts without imparting any damage to the steel longitudinal members of the car which are always expensive. We have our tremendous crushable front fender so in the event of running up against a gate post uh, the, the fender itself just recovers. With Freelander, low-cost repairs, the, the front bumper arrangement, the crush cans, the fender, our lowest possible level of serviceable parts that we've achieved have led the insurance companies to, uh, to underwrite the car at a very low insurance level. For the design, development and manufacture of a brand new incremental vehicle is one of the most complicated processes in the world. That whole process from digging material out of the ground or, or getting it out from underneath the North Sea, converting it into um, usable raw materials, finishing operations, making it into components, and finally supplying and assembling it together into a world-class motor car is extraordinarily complicated. And I guess if I, if I thought about it a bit too much, it's so complicated that I probably wouldn't sleep at night. But the reason that I do sleep at night is that I know I've had the backup of one of the best delivery teams that I've known in the trade.